You may be wondering, why is there so many different variations of the Creator's name? Which one is right? In today's video, we are going to look into archaeology, and we're going to look into the scriptures, and we are going to learn about the name of God. You ready, fam? Let's go! Shabbat Shalom, fam. It's your brother Jay in Israel. Welcome to the Shabbat Word. First off, I'd like to give all praises, all glory, all kavod to the Most High Yah. Kavod is the Hebrew word for honor, for splendor, and for glory. To the children of Israel here in the United States, in the Caribbean, in the Americas, in Africa, scattered throughout the four corners of the world, and to all who love Yah. Let us bless our King by saying together, Baruch Atah Yah, Baruch Atah Yah. Baruch is the Hebrew word for blessed, blessed be. Atah is the Hebrew word for you, referring to the Creator. And Yah is the name of our Creator. Now before we get into the message, let us gather in Tefillah, which is prayer. Since this is YouTube, family, we can pray together. Let's gather in Tefillah. Yah Eloheinu, Elohe Avoteinu, Elohe Yisrael. Yah, our God, the God of our ancestors, the God of Israel. We love you. We thank you. We fear you. We bow down to you. We worship you. All glory to you, Yah, for you are Ha Bore, the Creator. Our faith is in you, Yah. We trust and hold on to you. For you are our Savior. You are our rock. You are our deliverer. We love you, Yah. We are thankful for your abundant blessings. We are thankful for your love. We are thankful for the blood of your son, Yahushua HaMashiach, that through his blood we have salvation. We thank you for food, for clothes, for a roof over our head, and for abundance. Yehovah, we call on your presence. We call on your Ruach HaKodesh, your Holy Spirit, to dwell upon us, to dwell within our homes, to dwell in our minds, our hearts, and our souls. We crave your word. We are hungry and we are thirsty to hear your word. We pray that we hear your word and that we obey your perfect word. We thank you, Yah. You are our sustainer, our provider, our protector, our healer. We thank you for the gift of life. We are thankful that we woke up to this day, this blessed Shabbat day, that we get to keep holy. Thank you, Yah, for the Shabbat day. We thank you for all things and for everything. All praises to you, Yah. Hashem, Yahusha, Hamashiach. In the name of Yahusha, we pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. The title of today's message, yod Hey wow Hey, the name of God. Now, family, in our community, the Hebrew Israelite community, we hear so many different variations of the pronunciation of the name of the Creator. There's so many out there, so many different versions of the name of the Creator. So you may be wondering, which one is it? Which one is the name of God? Well, family, we're going to do our due diligence today. We're going to do our research and we are going to look into the name of God. So at this time, family, let's look on the screen and let me show you what I mean. All glory to Yah. Tetragrammaton. The tetragrammaton, four letters, or the tetragram, is the four letter Hebrew theonym. What's a theonym? A theonym is the proper name of a deity. 
transliterated as YHWH or YHVH, the name of God in the Hebrew Bible. The four letters written in red from right to left in Hebrew are Yod, Hey, Wow, Hey. Right here, family. Yod, Hey, Wow, Hey. It's kind of strange, ain't it? I had to get used to that. But our language is from right to left. The name may be derived from a verb that means to be, to exist, to cause to become, or to come to pass. While there is no consensus about the structure and etymology of the name, let me read that again. This is important. While there is no consensus about the structure and etymology of the name, the form Yahweh is now accepted almost universally through the vocalization Jehovah continues to have wide usage. The books of the Torah and the rest of the Hebrew Bible, except Esther, Ecclesiastes, and with possible instance of the short form Yah, Yod, Hey, in verse 8-6, the Song of Songs, contain the Hebrew name. Observant Jews and those who follow Talmudic Jewish traditions do not pronounce Yod, Hey, Wow, Hey. Nor do they read aloud proposed transcription forms such as Yahweh or Jehovah. Instead, they replace it with a different term, whether in addressing or referring to the God of Israel. Common substitutions in Hebrew are Adonai, trans translates as my lords to be technical, and that is a majestic plural, my lords, or Elohim, which is also a majestic plural. Literally, gods, but treated as singular when meaning God in prayer, or Hashem, which means the name in everyday speech. Let's check out the four letters. The letters properly written in red from right to left in biblical Hebrew. Yod, hey, wow, hey. Let's check out the etymology. Etymology. The Hebrew Bible explains it by the formula, Ege Asher Ege, translated, I am that I am, the name of God revealed to Moshe in Exodus 3.14. This would frame YHWH, as a derivation from the Hebrew triconsonantal root haya, to be, become, come to pass, with a third person masculine prefix, in place of the first person, thereby affording translations as he who causes to exist, he who is, although this would elicit the form yh, yh, not yo, a, not yo. Y-H-W-H, Salika, to rectify this, some scholars propose that the Tetragrammaton represents a substitution of the medial form Y for W, and occasionally attested practice in Biblical Hebrew as both letters function as matres lexionis. Others propose that the Tetragrammaton derived instead from the triconsonantal root hey while hey to be, constitute, with the final form eliciting similar translations as those derived from hey, yo, hey. I know that is technical family, but let's at least cover it. Let's do our due diligence. Let's continue. As such, the consensus among modern scholars considers that YHWH represents a verbal form, while the yo represents the third masculine verbal prefix of the verb hey yo hey haya to be as indicated in the Hebrew Bible. I know that's technical jargon. For those that are familiar, those who know the Hebrew language are familiar with, with some of this jargon here. But I just want to at least cover that family. Now let's go to vocalization. 
Y-H-W-H in Hebrew script. Let's go, family. Like all letters in the Hebrew script, the letters Y-H-W-H originally indicated consonants. In unpointed biblical Hebrew, most vowels are not written, but some are indicated ambiguously as certain letters came to have a secondary function indicating vowels, similar to the Latin use of I and V to indicate either the consonants, J, W, or the vowels, I, and U. Hebrew letters used to indicate vowels are known as emot kari ah, emot kari ah, or matres lecciones, the mothers of reading. Therefore, it can be difficult to deduce how a word is pronounced from its spelling. In each of the four letters of the Tetragrammaton can individually serve as a mater lexionis. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but if I am, family, if I'm not, correct me, family. Several centuries later, between the 5th through 10th century CE, the original consonantal text of the Hebrew Bible was provided with vowel marks by the Masoretes to, ex to assist reading. In places where the word to be read, the kire, dif differed from, the, from that indicated by the consonants of the written text, the kativ, they wrote the kire in the margin as a note showing what was to be read. In such a case, the vowel marks of the kire were written on the kativ. For a few frequent words, the marginal note was omitted. They are called kere perpetuum. I don't know. Help me please, family. Kire, let's check that out. So kire and kativ from the Aramaic. Kire. Kire means what is read. Kire, what is read. And the kativ, what is written. Kire means what is read. And kativ means what is written. All right, family, let's go back. Right here. One of the frequent cases of the Tetragrammaton, which according to the later Rebbeinite Jewish practices should not be pronounced, but read as Adonai, translated my lords, plural, majestic plural, taken as singular, or if the previous or next word already was Adonai as Elohim. Writing the vowel diacritics of these two words on the consonants W, H, V, H produce Yehoah, Yehoah, or Yehovi, Yehovi, respectively. Ghost words that would spell Yehoah or Yehovah and Yehovi or Yehovi or Yehovi <laughs> Salika Yehovah or Yehovi respectively diacritic marks family those are the, the marks that you see in the Hebrew like these little dots that you see those are diacritics and these dots they serve as vowels and they were provided by the Masoretes as we read right here family all right, all right, family. Hopefully, I'm not boring you, family. Hopefully, I'm not putting you to sleep. But we've got to cover this because we hear so many different variations of the Creator's name. we got to do our due diligence. The oldest complete are nearly complete manuscripts of the Masoretic texts with Tiberian vocalization, such as the Aleppo Codex and the Leningrad Codex, both of the 10th and 11th century, mostly write Yehwa. Yehwa, Yehwa, with no pointing on the first hay. The hay is right here, the first hay. There's no pointing, no vowel pointing on the first hay is what, what it's saying. It could be because the O, diacritic, O as in Yeho, Yehoah, as we see right here, this little dot right up here. It's, it's small, but there's like a dot up here, family. This dot is a polon, to be technical. So, let's go back. With no pointing on the first hay, 
as we see right up there, family. It could be because the old diacritic point plays no useful role in distinguishing between Adonai and Elohim, and so is redundant, or could point to the Kire being Shema, which is Aramaic for the name. Yahweh. Let's go, family. Let's go. The scholarly consensus is that the original pronunciation of the Tetragrammaton was Yahweh. 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 R.R. Reno agrees that when in the late first millennium, Yehudim scholars inserted indications of the vowels into the Hebrew Bible that signal that what was pronounced was Adonai, Lord. Now Jews later combined the vowels of Adonai with the consonants of the Tetragrammaton and invented the name Jehovah. Paul, I don't know how you say that. Paul, Ju, Juan, Salika, it means forgiveness. Forgiveness for botching some of these names. I don't mean to. Paul, Juan, and Te, Takamitsu Murakoa. Help me, please. The Kire is Yehoah. Yehoah, the Lord. Whilst the Ketiv, which is the written, the Kire is what is read, Yehoah, which the Ketiv, which is written, is probably Yahweh. 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 According to ancient witnesses. And they add, note one, in our translations, we have used Yahweh, a form widely accepted by scholars, instead of the traditional Yehoah or Jehovah. In 1869, in Smith's Bible Dictionary, a collaborative work of noted scholars of the time, declared, whatever, therefore, be the true pronunciation of the word, there can be little doubt that it is not Jehovah. Or Yehovah. Mark P. Arnold remarks that certain conclusions drawn from the pronunciation Yod Hey Wow Hey as Yahweh would be valid even if the scholarly consensus were not correct. Thomas Romer holds that the original pronunciation of YHWH was Yaho. Yaho. Or Yahoo. Hmm. Familiar with that family? Yahoo or Yahoo. Math, Max Salika, Max Riesel, in the mysterious name of YHWH, says that the vocalization of the Tetragrammaton must originally have been Yahua or Yahua. Yahua. In our community. The Creator's name is commonly pronounced as Yahuwah. Yahuwah. I'm not going to read this paragraph, family, but here's another variation. Yahweh. Feel free to read. Let's skip down to adoption. The adoption at the time of the Protestant Reformation of Jehovah in place of the traditional Lord in some translations. But lack of vernacular or Latin of the biblical Tetragrammaton stirred up dispute about its correctness. In 1711, Adrian Reland published a book containing the text of 17th century writings, five attacking and five defending it. As critical of the use Jehovah, its incorporated writings from this person writes here, sorry, I'm not going to try to pronounce that, 1550 to 1616, known as that part. And we go right there, family, right here. 1593, 1629, Lewis Capel, 1585, 1658. This, this person right here, 1564 to 1629. This person right here, 1618 to 1679. Defending Jehovah were writings by Nicholas Fuller, 1557, 1626. And Thomas Gatzeker, 15, 
74 to 1654. And three essays by this person right here, 1624 to 1699. The opponents of Jehovah said that the Tetragrammaton should be pronounced as Adonai. And in general, do not speculate on what may have been the original pronunciation. Although mention is made of the fact that some held that Jave was that pronunciation. Almost two centuries after the 17th century, works reprinted by Reland, 19th century, Wilhelm Gesenius reported in his thesaurus, right there, on the main reasoning of those who argued either for Yaho, Yahwo, Salika, Yahwo, Yahwo, or Yahweh. Yahweh or Yahweh as the original pronunciation of the trend of the Tetragrammaton as opposed to Yahuwah. He explicitly he explicitly cited the 17th century writers mentioned by Reland as supporters of Yahuwah as well as implicitly citing Johann David Michaels, 1717 and 1791, and Johann Frederick von Mayer, 1772 to 1849, the latter of whom Johann Hendrik Kurtz described as the last of those who had maintained with great pertinacity that Yahuwah was the correct and original point. Edward Robinson's translation of a work by Gesenius gives Gesenius' personal view as my own view coincides with that of those who regard this name as anciently pronounced Yahweh, Yahweh, like the Samaritans. Yohei Wauhei, the name of God. Let's really get some water real quick. We're doing a little bit of reading, family. But we have to do our investigation. We can't just listen to he say. We can't just run with it, family. We've got to do our research. Now let's continue with non-biblical texts. Texts with Tetragrammaton. Let's get it, family. Certain overviewers begin with the Egyptian epigraphy, a hieroglyphic inscription of the Pharaoh Amenhotep III, 1402 to 1363 BCE, mentions a group of Shashu whom it calls the Shashu of YHW, suggesting that the Amenhotep III inscription may indicate that worship of Yahweh originated in an area to the southeast of Israel. Wow, wow, it's fascinating. A later inscription from the time of Ramesses II, 1279 to 1213 BC, BCE in West Amara, associates the Shashu nomads with SRR interpreted as Mount Seir, spoken of some texts as where Yahweh comes from. All right, family, let's go ahead. Let's check out Shashu. The Shashu were Shemitic speaking pastoral nomads in the southern Levant from the late Bronze Age to the early Iron Age or the third intermediate period of Mizraim. They were, they were tent dwellers organized in clans ruled by a tribal chieftain and were described as brigades active from the Jezreel Valley of Ashkelon to the Transjordan and in the Sinai. Some of them also worked as mercenaries for Asiatic and Egyptian armies. Let's jump down to Shashu of YHW. Two Egyptian texts, one dated from the period of Omenotet III, as we just read, family, the 14th century BCE, the other to the age of Ramesses II, the 13th century BCE, as we also read, referred to 
the land of the Shashu, in which YHW or Yahoo is a toponym. Toponym, including their origins, meanings, usage, and types. Toponym is the general term for a proper name of any geographical feature. And full scope of the term also includes proper names of all cosmographical features. Wow. Let's read this sentence right here, family. Regarding the name YHW, Michael Astauer observed that the hieroglyphic rendering corresponds very precisely to the Hebrew tetragrammaton, yod Hey wow Hey, yhwh or Yahweh, and antecedents the here, there, too, oldest occurrence of that divine name. In other words, according to archaeology, the name of the creator was originally YHW and later was YHWH. Wow. Let's go back, family. The previous oldest known inscription of the Tetragrammaton, the four letters, dates to 840 BCE. The Misha Stele mentions the Israelite god Yahweh. The Misha Stele bears the earliest known reference, 840 BCE, to the Israelite god Yahweh. Get a close up, family. We see the name of our creator. On the Misha Stele in Paleo Hebrew, Yod He Wow He. Yod He Wow He, the name of God. Praise Yah. Here's another inscription, Yod He Wow He, in one of the Lakish letters, right here, family. Now let's skip down. We're going to read a little bit more. Let's get down to Hebrew Bible. Let's read the Masoretic text. Let's check that out, family. According to the Jewish or the Yehudim Encyclopedia, it occurs 5,410 times in the Hebrew Scriptures. In the Hebrew Bible, the Tetragrammaton occurs 6,828 times, as can be seen in this right here, family. And in this right here, family, the VHS, which I own. I have this, family. I have the VHS. In addition, the marginal notes or Masora indicate that in another 134 places where the received text has the word Adonai, an earlier text had the Tetragrammaton, which would add up to 142 additional occurrences. Even in the Dead Sea Scrolls, practice varied with regard to use of the Tetragrammaton. Fascinating. According to Brown Driver Briggs, Yehoah, Yehoah, Kirei, which is red, Adonai, Yehoah, occurs 6,518 times. And it's a little small. Let me blow it up, family. I'm reading from the TV, and the TV is far. It's, it's kind of a distance, family. Let me blow this up a little bit. Salika, I don't want to botch it. Let's see. Let me blow up some more. Whoa! It's kind of big. <laughs> Salika, family. But I want to pronounce this correctly. Yahoi. Yahoi. So let me read that again, family. Let's start over. Even in the Dead Sea Scrolls, practice varied with regard to use of the Tetragrammaton. According to Brown Driver Briggs, Yehoah, Yehoah occurs 6,518 times. And Yehoah, 
Yahweh from Elohim 305 times in the Masoretic text. Okay, let me bring it back down. I mean, it hurts your eyes, family. I just wanted to pronounce that correctly. The first appearance of the Tetragrammaton is in the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 4. The only books it does not appear are in Ecclesiastes, the book of Esther, and Song of Songs. In the book of Esther, the Tetragrammaton does not appear, but it has been distinguished acrostic-wise in the initial or last letters of the four consecutive words, as indicated in Esther 7.5. By writing the four letters in red in at least three ancient Hebrew manuscripts. The short form, Yah, Yah, a diagram, a, the grammaton, or diagrammaton, please feel free to correct me. There's a lot of people in the chat that's always correct me, so feel free, to, feel free to help me avoid it. I'm really trying to pronounce this correctly. A digrammaton occurs 50 times if the phrase Hallelujah is included. 43 times in the Psalms, once in Exodus 15, 2, 17, 16, Isaiah 12, 2, 26, 4, and twice in Isaiah 38, 11. It also appears in the Greek phrase right there. I ain't trying to read the Greek right now, family. Other short forms are found as a component of the four Hebrew names in the Bible. Yo or Yeho. 29 names in Yahoo or Yah, 27 J, name, J names. A form, Yahoo or Yaho, appears in the name Eli O and I. Now, family, it's hard to read the Hebrew names in English. It's actually easy to read it in Hebrew. I'm taking, I'm taking my best guess, family. El, Elio, Elioni? In First Chronicles 3, 23 to 24, 4, 26, 7, 8, Ezra 22, 22, 27, Nehemiah 12, 41. The following graph shows the absolute number of occurrences of the Tetragrammaton, 6,828 in all, in the books in the Masoretic text, without relation to the length of the books. Here goes the chart, family. Feel free to check it out. Hallelujah. Now let's finish this article up by reading the Dead Sea Scrolls portion. All right, all right. In the Dead Sea Scrolls and other Hebrew and Aramaic texts, the Tetragrammaton and some other names of God in Judaism, such as El or Elohim, were sometimes written in Paleo-Hebrew scripts, showing that they were treated specially most of God's names were pronounced until about the 2nd century BCE. Then, as a tradition of non-pronunciation of the names develops, alternatives for the Tetragrammaton appeared, such as Adonai and some of these great names. The 4Q120, a Greek fragment of Leviticus 26-16, Discovered in the Dead Sea Scrolls of Qumran has that right here, the name of the creator, the Greek form of the Hebrew, Trigrammaton of YHW. The historian John the Lydian, 6th century, wrote the Roman Varro, 116 to 27 BCE. Defining him that this that is the Jewish God says that he is called that in the Chaldean mysteries. Right there, family. Van Kulten mentions that right here is one of the specially Jewish destinations for God. And the Aramaic papyri from the Jews at Elephant Scene show that this right here is an original Jewish term. Almost there, family. Let's go. The preserved manuscripts from Qumran show the inconsistent practice of writing the Tetragrammaton, mainly in biblical quotations. In some manuscripts, is written 
in Paleo Hebrew scripts, square, square scripts, or replaced with four dots or dashes. The members of the Qumran community were aware of the existence of the Tetragrammaton, but this was not tantamount to granting consent for its existing and speaking. This is evidenced not only by a special treatment of the Tetragrammaton in the text, but by the recommendation recorded in the rule of association. Who will remember the most glorious name, which is above all? The tablet below presents all the manuscripts in which the Tetragrammaton is written in Paleo Hebrew script, in square script, and all the manuscripts in which the copyists have the Tetra Punch. I don't know how you say that. Either Tetra Punch, this word right here, right here, is either four dots or dashes. Copyists use the dashes or the dots apparently to warn against pronouncing the name of God. And the manuscript number 4Q248 is in the form of bars. And here you go, family, if you want to go ahead and check out this scholarship. You want to see the textual variations. You want to do your textual criticism, feel free to check this out. Where in the Qumran community, the creator's name was written in Paleo Hebrew, square script, or in dashes or dots. Hallelujah. yod heh wow -Hey, the name of God. Praise y'all. We getting it in today, family. We getting it in. We doing our research. This is how we do it. This is how Bruce do it. The Tetragrammaton, the Hebrew name of God, transliterated in four letters as Y-H-W-H. -H. Here is the Proto-Sinatic, the Paleo-Hebrew, and the Block Hebrew. Now remember, family, our language is written in red from right to left. Yod, hey, wow, hey. And the same for right here and the same for right here. All glory. Pronunciations. Now your brother put together a list of different pronunciations of the Tetragrammaton. If you know any that's not in this list, feel free to let me know. But this is what I gathered. Yahweh, Yahuwah, 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 Yehovah, Yahoi, Yehovi, Yehwah, Yahwah, Yaho, Yahwo, Yahu, Yahwi, Yahawa, Ahaya. Now many of the camps out there in our community, they say Yahawa. And there's camps out there as well that say Ahaya. You hear your brother always say, Yehoah, I prefer to say Yehoah, but also in our community, many of us say Yahuwah. But here is a list, family. Feel free to add to it. Now, these names are excluding the letter J. I did that on purpose. All glory to Yah. Now, family, let's open up the word of Yah. Let us turn to Exodus Chapter 3, verses 10 through 14. Now let's scroll up to the top for some context. The burning bush. The mission of Moshe. Hallelujah. Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Mitzrayim. And Moshe said unto Yah, Who am I? That I should go unto Pharaoh, that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Mitzrayim. Now remember, Moshe had a speech problem. And he also had a doubting problem as well. He was doubting himself. Don't this sound familiar, family? Don't this sound like us? 
when we are not connected to Yah? Let's continue. And he said, certainly I will be with thee. And this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people out of Mitzrayim. Ye shall serve Yah upon this mountain. And Moshe said unto Yah, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and say unto them, The Yah of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, what is his name? What shall I say unto them? And Yah said unto Moshe, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Now, family, let's open up the tools. Let me show you some game, family. It's a free game right here. This is free gems right here. And I ain't charging. It's free right here. Let's read verse 314 in our language. Hallelujah. Wayomer Elohim El Moshe. Eye Asher. Eye. Wayomer Kor Tomer. Livne Yisrael. Eye. Shalachani. Alechem. Praise Yah. The phrase. Eye, Asher, Eye, is translated as I am that I am. Technically, Eye, Asher, Eye should be translated technically as I will be that I will be. Eye, this is in the cow stem. It is cow imperfect. It is an imperfect verb. It's in the first person, common, singular. I will be. In the Shoresh, which is the root. Because remember, Hebrew words, most Hebrew words come from verbs. Because our language is all about that action. The Shoresh is Haya. He was. Haya means he was. Eye means I will be. Eye, I will be. Asher. Asher is a pronoun, a relative pronoun, which means who, which, that. Eye, I will be. Eye, Asher. Eye, I will be that I will be. But the translation, I am that I am, it works as well, family. Praise Yah. I am have sent me unto you. I am right here, family, is right here. Eye, eye, I will be right here. I will be. Yod Hey Wow Hey, the name of God. Exodus chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. Yah promises action. Then Yehoah said unto Moshe, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go. And with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And Yah spake unto Moshe and said unto him, I am. Yehoah, and I appeared unto Abraham, unto Yitzchak, and unto Yaakov by the name God Almighty, but by my name, Yehoah, was I not known to them. Now let's break down verse 3. Let's get it. It's a Mojim's family. Wa era el Avraham, wa el Yitzchak, wa el Yaakov, ba el Shaddai, u Shami Yahweh, lo nothati lahem. Abraham, Isaac, 
in Jacob, knew our Creator by the name El Shaddai, which is translated as God Almighty. El Shaddai, God Almighty. Now the name El Shaddai, whoo, family, it's deep, it's profound. I'm going to say that for another time. I'm going to drop that message in the future, family. It's, it's going to blow your mind. And it says right here, and my name, Yod, Hey, Wow, Hey, Yahweh, the name of the creator, Yod, Hey, Wow, Hey. Praise Yah. Yod, Hey, Wow, Hey, the name of God. Yo, hey, wow, hey, the name of our creator family consists of three verbs. Check this out. The letter hey that we see in blue represents haya, haya, which means he was. The Hebrew letters. Hey and wow that we see in purple represents Hoe Hoe, which means he is. Yod that we see in red represents Yih Yeh, Yih Yeh, which means he will be. The past, the present, and the future. Haya Hoe Yee He was, he is, he will be. All glory to Yah. Haya Hoe Yee He was, he is, he will be. Yod Hey Wow Hey, the name. Of God. Jehovah Witnesses. The name of the Creator is not Jehovah. Stop with the cat. Knock it off, Jehovah Witness. And if you're gonna knock on my dough, be prepared to get this work. Respectfully. Let me show you. It says, according to the Britannica, the letter J, the tenth letter of the alphabet. It was not differentiated from the letter I until comparatively modern times. Now let's jump down to this sentence right here. Let's get to it, family. The process of differentiation began about the 14th century, but was not complete until the 17th century. So, if them Jehovah Witnesses Come knocking at your door, talking about, are you ready for Jehovah's return? Because if you're not, I got a pamphlet. If they come up with that on the Shabbat day, on the Shabbat morning, disturbing your peace by knocking on your door, flip that family. Use it as an opportunity to spread the word of Yah, to plant a seed to show them the facts that the creator's name is not Jehovah. Use that as an opportunity to lead them to Yah through Yahusha HaMashiach. Not all Jehovah's Witnesses are bad people. Now some of them, yeah, okay, you got some bad people in every religion. But some of them are, are real thirsty for the word. So represent Yah family. Let's represent Yah with kindness and with love. Yod Hey Wow Hey, the name of God. Now we wrapping up family. We wrapping up. I have a secret to reveal to you. 
Yo, hey, wow, hey. Behold, nail. Behold, hand. This is a secret interpretation of Yahusha Hamashiach. For our Messiah was hung on a tree. He was nailed on a tree. Behold, nail. Behold, hand. Al Kavo to Yah and Yahusha Hamashiach. Many Jewish people, and there are Hebrew Israelites who do not call the Creator by the name Yod Hey Wah Hey. They don't say Yahuwah, Yahuwah, etc., etc. Out of respect, they do not say the Creator's name. They use titles such as Adonai, which means Lord or Lord's to be technical. And they do not say Elohim, which means God, or God's to be technical. Out of respect, they do not call the creator by his name. However, however, we have the freedom to call the creator by yod Hey wow Hey. I gotta see the proof. I don't know, Jay, I think you're jawsing. I got you, I got you. Let me show you the proof. Let's turn. So 1 Kings 18.24. Let's get it. For context, Yah or Baal on Mount Carmel, the prophet Elijah, verse 24. Hallelujah. And call ye on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of your hey, wow, hey. And the Elohim that answereth by fire, let him be Elohim. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. We can call the creator, Yod, Hey, Wow, Hey. Now let's double check. Let's get that proof. Let me show you, family. U karatim, bashem Elohim. But I need Ekra, Vashem Yahuwah. What I need, and I, I will call in the name of Yod, Hey, Wow, Hey. We can call the Creator Yod, Hey, Wow, Hey. Yahuwah, Yahuwah, Yahuwah. Joel, chapter 2, verse 32, is another witness. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of yod heh wah shall be delivered. For in Mount Sion and in Yerushalayim shall be deliverance, as yod heh wah hath said, and in the remnant whom yod heh wah shall call. Here's the proof, family. We double checking. Praise Yah. Wehaya ko asher yikra bashem Yahuwah yimalit. Praise Yah. And it shall come to pass all which he will call in the name of Yod Hewahe, he will be delivered. Praise Yah. Yod Hey Wah Hey, the name of God. I'm closing, family. I know I said that earlier. It's a preaching habit. We always say we're closing. Closing could take like 15 to 20 minutes. But I'm closing for real, for real. What I'm about to say, family, it may be controversial. You may not agree with me, but that's okay. We still fam at the end of the day. Family do not always agree on everything. You my brother, you my sister, even when we disagree. And Hebrew Israelites, we're always disagreeing with each other. 
We always fight. We're always going back and forth, always chattering about who thinks they're right. Technically, the creator does not have a name. What you mean, Jay? After all this research that you've been showing, you said his name was Yodhe Wahe. Now you saying the creator don't have a name? You draws it, Jay. You lying. Stop capping. Now, family, 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 family. Bear with me. A name has limitations. For the creator does not have limitations. Our creator cannot be limited. And our creator cannot be defined. That's what I mean when I say that the creator technically does not have a name. Our creator is infinite. There is not enough words that can express the greatness, the power of our creator. yod heh wow hey, the name of God. I hope this message blessed you, family. Any, any mistakes, be my own. All praises to Yah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Let us close with a benediction. Let us turn to my meat bar, which is Numbers, chapter 6, verses 22 through 27. Or you can follow with your brother. The priestly blessing, the benediction, biblical Hebrew pronunciation and translation in English and Hebrew. The blessing of the children of Israel, Numbers, chapter 6, 22 through 27. I made this PDF, family. Is free. It's free to download. So instead of looking at me reading the Hebrew alone, let's all read our beautiful and powerful language together. And feel free to check out the free goodies that I have in the description box. All glory to Yah. The blessing of the children of Israel. Praise Yah. Call the Breku et Bene Yisrael Amor Lahim. And Yehovah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto Aharon and unto his son, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel. Ye shall say unto them, Yibareka Yehovah wa Yishmareka, Ya er Yehovah pana aleka wa Hunika, Yesa Yehovah pana aleka wa Yasin Neka. Shalom. May Yehovah bless thee and keep thee. May Yehovah make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. May Yehovah lift up his countenance upon thee and may he give thee peace. Hallelujah! Family, that concludes today's Shabbat word. Let's continue to praise Yod, Hey, Wah, Hey, our Creator. And please, family, like, share, subscribe, and comment. Thank you. I appreciate it, family. I'm Jane Israel. Until next time, Shabbat Shalom, family.